Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIPC. I'm Cheryl Yun. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. A teenage gunman in Texas kills 21 people, 19 of them young children. Joe Biden challenges U.S. lawmakers to stand up against the gun lobby. And locally, the latest pay trend report goes to the Executive Council for the final say on civil service salary increases. At least 19 children aged between 7 and 10 and two adults have been shot dead by a teenage gunman in the U.S. state of Texas. The massacre devastated the mainly Hispanic town of Uvalde as distraught parents waited to learn the fate of their children. The children of Rob Elementary School went to class on Tuesday, looking forward to their summer break in two days' time. But many left in hearses, never to return to the school, which proclaimed in its motto, Live, Learn and Love. Earlier, police rushed to the predominantly Hispanic school, but it was too late. An 18-year-old man, armed with a handgun and a semi-automatic rifle, had gone on a shooting rampage. At least 19 pupils, aged between 7 and 10, and two teachers were killed. The carnage ended when the suspect, identified as Salvador Ramos, was killed. He was alleged to have shot his grandmother, who survived, before driving to the school in Uvalde, 135 kilometers west of San Antonio. Parents who rushed to the school were distraught. There's kids there still right now, but my daughter's not there yet. I'm just, just confused and worried. I'm trying to find out where my baby's at. The massacre was the worst school shooting in the United States since the assault on the Sandy Hook Elementary School in Connecticut a decade ago, when a gunman killed 26 people, including 20 children aged 6 and 7. The mass shooting in Texas came 10 days after a teenage gunman killed 10 blacks in Buffalo City in New York State. There's grief and anger in the United States following the school killings in Texas. Many Americans directed their outrage at the powerful gun lobby and lawmakers who refused to tighten gun controls. U.S. President Joe Biden ordered flags at the White House and all federal buildings to be flown at half-mast as a mark of respect for the victims of the Texas school massacre. He then lashed out at the influential gun lobby. The idea that an 18-year-old kid can walk into a gun store and buy two assault weapons is just wrong. What in God's name do you need a solvent for except to kill someone? It's just sick. And the gun manufacturers have spent two decades aggressively marking assault weapons, which make them the most and largest profit. For God's sake, we have to have the courage to stand up to the industry. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy appealed to his fellow lawmakers, especially Republicans, to make the U.S. safe for children. This only happens in this country and nowhere else. Nowhere else do little kids go to school thinking that they might be shot that day. Nowhere else do parents have to talk to their kids, as I have had to do, about why they got locked into a bathroom and told to be quiet for five minutes just in case a bad man entered that building. Nowhere else does that happen except here in the United States of America. Republican Senator Ted Cruz, who received the most money from the gun lobby, was branded by angry Americans as a hypocrite when he offered to pray for the victims of the latest shooting which occurred in his own state. The U.S. sports community has paid tribute to the victims of the school massacre. Before his team was due to play in Texas, an NBA head coach pointed the finger at senators for refusing to pass the Bipartisan Background Checks Act, also known as H.R. 8. When are we going to do something? I'm tired. I'm, I'm so tired of getting up here and offering condolences to, to the devastated families that are out there. I'm so tired of the, excuse me, I'm sorry, I'm tired of the moments of silence. 
enough. There's 50 senators right now who refuse to vote on H.R. 8, which is a background check rule that the House passed a couple years ago. It's been sitting there for two years. They won't vote on it because they want to hold on to their own power. It's pathetic. I've had enough. In Hong Kong, the Pay Trend Survey Committee has verified its latest recommendations on civil service pay increases. It will now be up to the Executive Council to decide how much more money the city's 180,000 civil servants should be given this year. Joanna Ho reports. The Civil Servants General Union has urged the government to raise salaries as recommended in the Pay Trend Survey report, which will be handed over to the Executive Council for its final approval. The report suggested a pay rise of 2.04 percent for junior civil servants, 4.55 percent for the middle bracket, and 7.26 percent for senior staff. The report on the pay trend in the private sector sparked a controversy as it didn't reflect data from the fifth COVID wave. This, according to the Chinese Civil Servants Association, meant that the report could be flawed and didn't reflect the real situation because some workers might have been put on unpaid leave. But Survey Committee Chairman Li Lunfei said private sector salaries were already rising before the fifth wave and the report's findings should not be doubted. The Civil Servants General Union, meanwhile, urged the government to align the raise in the lower and middle salary bands at 4.55 percent. It said it was the practice in past years to give non-senior staff the same percentage pay rise. Union Chairman Feng Chun Chong said civil services jobs have become less attractive recently, with the recruitment percentage plunging by double digits. He said civil servants should not be treated harshly as they back the government. Fong denied accusations that the union cherry-picked the survey's recommendation after it proposed scrapping the survey last year. The union explained that it still supports the pay adjustment mechanism despite calling for it to be revoked last year after wages were frozen. It called on the government to adopt the survey's recommendations, saying it will provide a knock-on effect to the private sector and speed up economic recovery. Joanna Ho, HKIBC. Health officials have defended the seven-day hotel quarantine for arrivals, saying most imported COVID cases were detected within one week. Albert Au of the Center for Health Protection said out of 40 people who tested positive since April after leaving their hotel, only two might have been infected while in isolation. This came as 28 imported cases were among the 251 new cases reported today, along with two COVID-related deaths. One more case was added to the Tai Kuching McDonald's cluster, taking the tally to 10. The cluster at St. Catherine's International Kindergarten grew to seven, with another student testing positive. The 33rd anniversary of the Tiananmen Square crackdown is approaching, but it is unlikely that any group will organize commemorative activities. The sole non-establishment lawmaker Tik Chi Yun will not move a motion to remember the event, while the Catholic Church will not hold memorial masses. Macy Mock reports. Lawmaker Tik Chi Yun said his third side party will not organize any activity this year to mark the Tiananmen Square crackdown. He denied that the decision was made out of fear of the national security law, but hoped the government would not ban June 4th activities because the issue is sensitive. He said he will move a motion to activate constitutional reform. But he will not follow past opposition practice of moving a motion every year to remember June 4th. The last time the motion was discussed in the Legislative Council was in 2019, when it was raised by former Democratic Party Chairman Wu Chi Wai. Meanwhile, the Catholic Diocese of Hong Kong will not hold June 4th memorial masses this year over concerns of violating the national security law. Until 2019, a vigil was held in Victoria Park every June 4th to mark the Tiananmen Square crackdown. But it was scrapped in the past two years with police citing anti-COVID measures to ban the gathering. 
The Hong Kong Alliance, which organized vigils, disbanded last year, and many of its leaders have been remanded on national security charges or for taking part in illegal assemblies. This year, the Leisure and Cultural Services Department said people can book the football pitches in Victoria Park between next Wednesday and next Sunday, but it will be strictly for sports. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. President Xi Jinping has defended China's human rights record, saying progress must suit national conditions. In a virtual meeting with Michelle Bachelet, the top United Nations human rights official, Xi condemned countries which lecture others and politicize human rights. Bachelet is visiting China and is expected to go to Xinjiang in the wake of accusations by the West that China is persecuting Uyghurs and other minority groups. Xi denied the allegations and said Beijing is willing to discuss human rights on the basis of mutual respect. The United States has criticized Bachelet's visit, alleging that China will stage manage her tour. North Korea is reported to have launched three ballistic missiles just hours after U.S. President Joe Biden ended his trip to East Asia. According to South Korean presidential spokeswoman Kang In-sun, the weapons were fired from the Sunan area in Pyongyang. One is suspected to be an intercontinental ballistic missile. Seoul and Tokyo said the tests were illegal and provocative. In response, the United States and South Korea fired two service-to-service -service missiles to show their capability. During his tour, Biden vowed to defend U.S. allies from North Korean nuclear threats. The Hang Seng Index edged higher today after three sessions in the red. There was a mixed performance in the tech sector. Video sharing mobile app Kwai Show jumped 5.4 percent, while rival Bilibili lost 4.3 percent. Alibaba and Tencent both fell over 1 percent each. Analysts believe tech investors are adopting a wait-and-see approach ahead of the quarterly results from Alibaba and Meituan. Auto shares continue to rise, with Great Wall Motor surging nearly 11 percent for a two-month high. Now let's take a look at the markets. The Hang Seng Index was up 59 points. Top 10 active stocks, Tencent was down $4, Meituan was up 10 cents. The Trekker Fund was up 6 cents and HSBC was up $1.55. Forex trading against the Hong Kong dollar, Euro is at 8.36, British pound at 9.80 and the Australian dollar at 5.52. The London FTSE is currently up 17 points. On to the weather now. Cloudy with sunny intervals and showers tomorrow. Temperatures will range between 25 and 29 degrees. Isolated thunderstorms on Friday and Saturday morning. But the sun will be back for the rest of the weekend. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world. That's our main news for Wednesday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Cheryl Yun. Thanks for watching. Good night.